everyone. Welcome. So I'm in a different spot than what I usually am. And I just have felt very particularly, I mean, in my, in myself. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that many of you are feeling the same way in just the bizarre uncertainty, right? I'm not quite sure what to plan on. Those, those types of emotions can cause us to feel less safety, less trust. And so sometimes it can be really challenging to want to get out of bed in the morning. Our rooms and our beds are safe right? They are, um, they're a cocoon. They allow us to feel safe. So today we're going to be, I'm, I'm going to be sharing, um, just a very gentle heart opening practice that's specific and geared to those days when you don't want to get out of bed and allowing ourselves to have compassion and love and peace and gratitude, um, for these bodies, but giving ourselves the space to feel and um, gentle movement, specifically opening and broadening between the shoulders is a wonderful place to start to create more endorphins, more emotions and feelings that allow us to feel more confident, to have greater um, self-love and compassion and give us the confidence to then carpe diem, right? Seize the day. Um, these do not need to be done, um, obviously in bed. Um, that sounded funny. <laughs> and we're just going to go with this. Um, you don't need to be right. You can be on your mat and these are wonderful first thing in the morning. Um, it, there is some gentle, like I mentioned, heart opening. Um, but if you know your body and opening through the heart slightly isn't, something that causes you to have issues going to sleep. This is also a wonderful thing to bring um, peace and calm and, and allow ourselves to kind of slowly um, focus our energy, uh, maybe before bed as well. So one thing to think about just really quickly alignment wise, we're not on a hard surface like we usually are, right? So with our mat, so there is not as much push back. It's easy to kind of sink in, which again is very, when it comes to um, sensation and tactile, um, especially if we're dealing with some anxiety, this is a comfortable place. So it's just really important to remember that when we're here, we want to really check into what's going on in our internal alignment. So using our core, using that oppositional lift, and I'll cue you through several things to help you with that. So just be mindful of that. This is, if you are sitting on your bed or you're doing this um, before you do anything else in the morning, then know that, uh, just be mindful of that. Um, that shift in energy that really is actually, um, it's just different. It's not that it's good or bad either way, it's just different, so just be mindful of that. So with that said, let's get started. Let's find just a comfortable position, um, easy pose. The hands can rest at the thighs. Go ahead and close your eyes. And if it feels more comfortable, you can always bring, I just, I love the connection of again, placing and touching my heart. And so I'm gonna bring both hands to my heart this morning. And just taking a couple of nice deep breaths focus on the inhales and the exhales. I am grateful for this new day, for the opportunity to experience life. I am grateful to wake up and experience a new day. With each inhale, bringing new life, focus, and opportunity into my beingness. And as we exhale, feeling that ebb of letting go, 
Letting go of what is not ours to claim. Letting go of what is not ours to make space for. Letting go of what is not ours to possess and what is no longer serving us. Just observe your emotions this morning. Again, maybe it's one of a little bit of anxiousness. Maybe it's feeling bogged down or more lethargic. Or maybe we have mindfulness, presence in this moment. Whatever that looks like, give gratitude. We're experiencing those emotions and allowing ourselves to observe those is powerful. And in this practice of yoga, literally meaning to yoke, we have an opportunity to give not only the body, but the mind and the soul compassion. Mindfulness, being here in this moment truly is compassion and awareness for what we're experiencing. Feeling this heartbeat. Knowing that we're here. We're kicking. We're thriving. Start to create deeper presence the length of the spine as we start to grow with our energy and our breath. Full inhale through the nose. And if we can be mindful, start to exhale through the nose and send that exhalation to the back of the throat. Ujjayi. Taking another full inhale slowly again, keeping those eyes closed if we'd like to, or take a peek at me. We're going to find little Tadasana lift. And exhale, let those elbows come wide. We're gonna to start to squeeze between those shoulder blades as we find cactus arms. Inhale, take that breath up. And exhale, open wide. Think about pushing the back of that head into an imaginary wall. And start to feel that heart open. Start to feel the engagement and the power and the support that comes with the core that comes from the spine, that comes with our breath. How powerful our body is, how powerful our mind is, how powerful our soul, our very individual soul is. Take about three more breaths, and again, keep those eyes closed. As long as you'd like to, you can do this whole practice with your eyes closed if you'd like to. Start to create a little bit more lift as we push those hips down into our bed or floor or mat. We start to create an oppositional force up through the fingertips, up through the top of that head and spine. And then exhale as we open. Go ahead and release those hands down to the side of the body. We're going to just take some nice gentle neck rolls. Pay attention to the energy that's taking place between the shoulders and the chest here. As we've started to open and use that breath work to really move stuff through us, right? We're not physical beings. We're spiritual beings having physical experiences. And so these bodies are processing so much. Can we start to feel how as we add movement, it gives us the ability and the power to process even in a greater capacity. Bring that head back to neutral and we're gonna to start to roll through those shoulders up, back and down, sliding those shoulder blades down into, the, into place, noticing if we can feel any type of energy or engagement through those side bodies as well. Taking several times to work through that and then opposite direction, rounding and rolling forward. So we're gonna to start to engage and add a deeper movement to these two movements. Seated cow and cat. Taking one more breath, rounding forward. And then inhale, let those shoulders come up, back and down. And then slowly shift that weight forward. We're gonna to start to brace through the core to push those hips down 
and then exhale, tuck and round, finding that seated cat. Inhale, shift that weight forward. Let the chest come forward, but we're not just protruding, right? We wanna create this stacked movement all the way through, creating alignment through that spine. And we're just waking that spine up, saying, it's all right. And here, we're moving, bringing, again, connection to the center. Using this powerful physical movement to let us observe. Waking up, experiencing. If we find ourselves again just feeling anxious or overwhelmed, coming back to that phrase, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to wake up and experience this new day. I am safe. I am calm. I am at peace. Take one, one more breath forward using that connection of breath to movement as we take that movement forward. Exhale, drop back into that nice deep seated cat. Think about creating slack between a string from the chin all the way down to that tailbone. And then sitting up nice and tall. Inhale, take that little Tadasana lift up. And exhale, we're gonna bring that left hand down, right arm comes up and over, little side body opening. So we wanna think about pushing down through that right hip as the right arm reaches up and over. Inhale, come back to center, and exhale, take that movement to that opposite side. Good, let's take a few more breaths here. Again, just giving this body the opportunity to just gently wake up right sometimes we need to wake up to an alarm which you know a lot of us probably right now we're not used to this idea that we can wake up maybe naturally more than others so be grateful for that right not having to get up maybe necessarily every day before the crack of dawn but giving ourselves this space to wake up and then gently Again, bringing deeper blood flow, bringing deeper circulation, deeper oxygen okay, to this body. Maybe the shift or the changes that that brings versus just jumping right out of bed the moment that alarm goes off in the morning. Let's take this side body bend one more time. We're gonna come back to center. Inhale, find that deep breath. Exhale, bringing those hands through. Anjali Mudra, heart center. Honor and salute this practice. Honor and salute you, me, all of us who truly are showing up and figuring this out and finding gratitude amongst it all. Go ahead and we're going to take that right. Um, ear down towards that right shoulder. Let's just give a little bit of a gentle stretch as we press a little bit of pressure on that right hand and then we're going to slowly just take that right chin towards the shoulder and then back up. Observing, noticing any tightness or tension through that upper back and neck. You might even start to feel maybe a little bit of a pulling deeper down into the shoulder blades. This is, again, an area of the body that loves to hold on to stuff, right? And we're not emotionally hurting, which is really easy to want to do right now between toilet paper and groceries, right? Like there is definitely an energy that some times takes place and we have to be able to set boundaries for ourselves to say, you know what, I'm not gonna take that on. So we're not gonna take on that emotional hoarding here. Go ahead, release that shoulder, that chin down towards the shoulder. We're gonna come back to center and release, and then switch sides. A little bit of pressure on that with that left hand, and then again, slowly taking the chin towards the left shoulder, and then back up towards that ceiling. And again, just methodically, almost think about just kind of rocking back and forth, letting that neck, that head, that spine know it's all right, we're good. 
You can process, you can let go. You don't need to hoard emotionally or hang on emotionally. Taking a couple more breaths. And slowly coming back to center and release that head. Let me adjust my headphone here. There we go. And the little tiny ears. Sometimes don't like these things. Go ahead and do a couple more shoulders rolls. And then we're gonna start to move through what, what I like to call a seated spinal circle or clean out the cookie dough bowl. So we're gonna take this movement to the right and we're gonna think about putting together that seated cow and cat. So as we come forward, we open through the chest and as we come back, we round through that spine. Inhale forward, exhale round. And again, we're starting to wake up that lower portion of the spine and back just a little bit more. And really, this is a really great place to just let go with full open mouth exhalations. Taking that inhale and exhale. So as we add deeper movements, right, we want to think about giving ourselves even greater permission to let go to have that compassion, which compassion is a key component for, again, opening through the heart, right? If, if we're hardened, a lot of times we round through those shoulders, but if we have compassion for ourselves and others, we allow ourselves to be open, to be vulnerable. We're gonna switch directions with the spinal circle and observe, again, at any time we do one side or the other, notice if there's maybe some slight differences or big differences from side to side. Again, certain parts of the body on one side or the other can be affected by emotions and very often do so. So really giving ourselves the ability to not say, okay, I gotta change this right now, but just observe, make the observation, be aware of it. Sitting up nice and tall, inhale, take that breath up, and exhale, let those elbows come wide, cactus arms, take that breath again, inhale, reach, exhale, open, let's do two more breaths here, good, using that engagement, draw that belly in and up, we want to feel strong and supported through that core, okay, that's our solar plexus, that's where that confidence, that deep, deep fire Okay, to live, to breathe, to succeed amongst all odds comes from. Take that next breath up. Exhale again, Anjali Mudra. And again, thinking about saluting ourselves for this powerful, powerful ability and opportunity that we have to turn inward. We're going to slowly make our way and we're going to come to a tabletop. Okay, so. I'm going to show you front view first. We're going to stack those knees and hips, shoulders and wrists. If your bed is too soft for those wrists, you can always make a fist. Okay, we're going to take that movement forward, our first full cow. So the chest comes forward, little squeeze in between those shoulder blades, and then we're going to slide the shoulders down and away from the ears, and you're going to feel some recruitment through those side bodies. The tailbone goes up and back, so we create that beautiful arch or U-shape, excuse me, in the spine. And then as we exhale, we're gonna push and lift and now creating that really deep rainbow arch through the spine. Make sure we continue to relax the shoulders away from the ears and just nod that head. Yes and no. And then several breaths here. Inhale, pulling that body forward. Exhale, round. And continue to create that nice deep connection to the spine. From a side view, it's gonna look like this. So as we inhale forward, exhale, tuck and round cat. And we wanna think about opposite ends of a string, one at the tailbone, one at the crown of the head. And as we work through this, okay, on the inhale, we're creating length or resistance on the string. And as we exhale, we're creating slack in the string. Three more breaths. Full inhale. Full exhale. And 
again, just creating this ability of waking up, thinking about the sun rising, thinking about, again, the power of a new day. As we come back to neutral spine, we're gonna find that tabletop and then we're gonna come back to that deep spinal circle. So we're gonna think about taking the movement forward first and then pushing out through that hip, swinging back into that variation of cat and then swinging wide to that opposite side. So we're taking again that concept of scraping out a nice giant bowl of cookie dough we are gonna scrape it to the very last dollop. So that's what I want you to think about, really being purposeful in this movement as we floss and scrape, working and warming that spine, the chest, using that breath. Full inhale as we shift that body forward, full exhale as we shift that body back. Let's take two more breaths to this direction. When you're ready, we're gonna shift that direction and move the other way. Working opposite and again, making those observations of connection, of variation in the body, right? From one hip to one side of that low back, the shoulder, the chest. Allowing this breath, again, to give ourselves permission to cleanse, to let go. Taking two more breaths. Finding that beautiful flow that is so unique to ourselves. And shifting that weight forward, we're gonna come back to that tabletop. Couple sewing needles here. So I just want you to think about bobbing. You're gonna drop in, and you can't really see with what I'm wearing today, but I'm actually squeezing through those shoulder blades, dropping down in, and then just pushing from the bottoms of my hand. My hands are gonna to start to recruit more now through the front of the body. So inhale, drop, slide that in those elbows, exhale, press up and away. Again, inhale, drop, exhale, press up and away. Think about my core. Notice I kind of went into more of a cow position there. So we want to neutralize that spine, slight tuck, tuck in that tailbone and engaging through, pulling in and up through that core. And then again, lowering down, pressing back up. Shoulders want to be stacked with those wrists and we want to be shoulder distance apart. Let's take two more breaths here. And just notice if there's any pulling and if this feels at all like tension or tightness, through that upper back or neck. Okay, then again, give ourselves the opportunity to release and give ourselves permission to not do that. And we can always shift our way to a Velasana or a child's pose. So we're gonna make our way down here anyway, right now. We're gonna extend those fingertips out, let those hips drop into those heels. And slowly think about again as we squeeze those shoulder blades together, those hands are actually going to kind of slide back and then forward and then back. But as we press the chest towards the bed or towards the floor, we're going to feel an, an engagement and opening through the front of the body. Okay? So let's take that for three more breaths and then we're going to add on as an option. So sliding, we can stay here, okay? Or we're gonna add on to this. As we reach those fingers forward, now with the use of our bed, we're gonna slide those elbows wide and find cactus arms. Let that forehead connect. I'm not trying, I'm trying to not muffle my voice as much as possible. But go ahead and let your forehead just release into the bed. And then as we slide those fingers up, Finding little Tadasana lift, and then exhale, let those elbows come wide. Think about, again, drawing the shoulder blades back and working that beautiful strength of the chest and the back in an oppositional way. Let's take two more breaths here. And then slowly creeping, curling those fingertips forward. 
we're gonna come into just a very, very gentle variation of what would be kind of our normal sun salutation. So we're gonna pull this body forward and we're gonna just let that those hips drop. The chest is gonna lift. Okay, you can either keep those toes tucked under or let the tops of the feet press into the mat. We're not gonna really get into a ton of functional alignment on this. I just want you to do what feels good. Okay, and then as we exhale, press back, we're gonna find Velasana, or we can create a little bit more energy and find Puppy Dog Pose, which is gonna let our hips open up a little bit more, knees open up a little bit more, and the tailbone stays high as the chest drops down in. Notice my chin is forward. Okay, my core is engaged, and then we're gonna take that movement forward again. We're gonna press down through those hips. Okay, variation, still pose. Option again is for the tops of the feet to press into the mat. And I want you to think about squeezing an imaginary block between those thighs. And then exhale, dropping back down in either child's pose or puppy dog pose. So again, I want you to think about the energy that we're creating through the front of the body which allows us to send powerful endorphins to our brain of strength, of power, of calm, of peace. We are, know that our physical movements, okay, our physical postures can actually play such a powerful role with how we're feeling emotionally. And opening through that chest is one of the best ways that we can connect to those powerful, powerful affirmations and emotions that bring us that strength, that are our divine nature, right? Rather than focusing on fear, anxiety, and stress. So let's take this movement one more time. Inhale, shifting that weight forward, letting those eyes lift if that feels okay, or we can just stay looking forward Draw the belly in and up, and then exhale, dropping into that Velasana pose. Slowly shifting that weight forward. We're gonna come back to tabletop, and we're gonna just work those hips side to side. So stack the shoulders, the wrists, the hips, the knees. Okay, and we're gonna just swing side to side. Those hips are another place that love love to emotionally hoard. They love to hang on to stuff that sometimes for years, for generations, they are stuck deep, deep down inside. So these beautiful movements are a wonderful place to just allow us to process, to let go, to have compassion, and in its place, resolve, stillness, safety, and trust. Slowly come back to that tabletop position. Take a couple cow and cats, or we can come back to that spinal circle if you'd like. And then gently, we're gonna slowly work ourselves to our backs on our bed or on our space. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to again this side profile here, this side position, and we're gonna gently just pull those knees into that chest. Point and flex and then slowly extending either one leg at a time or both. We're gonna find a line to das and a lift. Draw that belly in, pressing the bottoms of those feet into an imaginary wall reaching those fingertips towards an imaginary wall in the opposite direction and creating that length, pressing out through those shoulder blades. Point and flex those ankles. And then slowly pulling that right knee into our chest. We're gonna then take that next inhale to pull that right knee across the body into a reclining twist. So we've got beautiful cushion, especially if we're, you know, right on a bed here. We want to really, if possible, get ourselves to where we're stacked. If this does not feel great, guess what? Grab some pillows. You've got beautiful props here. 
and then just let that leg, that thigh rest and be propped up, okay, with those pillows. So we're gonna take that movement and the right arm's gonna work itself out pushing out through the bottom of that left foot. Just give a little bit of pressure on the top of that right thigh. And just really think about, again, cleansing. I always think about a rag, right? Like a dish towel or a washcloth. And in these beautiful little twists, we are cleansing ourselves of excess water. In this case, it's cleansing ourselves of things that again, are not ours to hold on to. They are not in our control, but what we can do, what we can control, is how we are on the inside, what we focus on on the inside. Take one more nice deep breath. A lot of times we're gonna feel this beautiful stretch from the low back into the outside portion of those hips and then come back to center as we release. Pull both knees into that chest, and then exhale, extend out, little Tadasana lift as we draw that belly in on the next inhale. Point and flex, and exhale, draw the left knee into that chest. Again, you've got your props, your pillows here. Slowly start to pull that left leg across the body, keeping the leg bent. Again, this is just to start, this is not a Hatha practice. This is not a power practice this morning. This is about rejuvenating. This is about creating balance and homeostasis. So as the left arm extends out, again, the eyes are gonna follow that left hand, make any little adjustments that you need to. Let those hips stack if possible. And again, taking that full inhale, Drawing in with that core, exhale, a little pressure on the front of that left thigh, and adding that beautiful twist, keeping the chest open. Full inhale, let that mouth open on that exhale. And then inhale, slowly coming back to center, pulling both knees into that chest, Rolling through those ankles. Inhale, extending out, little Tadasana lift. Deep exhale, rolling through the wrists and the ankles. And then slowly pulling that inhale back to center. These little stretches I do with my kids in the morning. Before they go to school. <laughs> we haven't been very good about doing them with homeschool, but we need to get back to that. But they love to do these first thing in the morning, especially my little Millie. So we're gonna come into happy baby next, okay? So depending on your flexibility, if you can't make this connection from hand to foot, you can always make connection hand to ankle. You can even bring those elbows and triceps on the inside and push down through the inner thighs, okay? So again, this is about not having pain. Okay, so as we create this movement, you wanna think about oppositionally pushing hand to foot, foot to hand, using that core to brace. Okay, again, using again, a little bit of that power through that core because we don't have an oppositional force as much here, right, on the bed. And just rocking again, that motion, how powerful of rocking. Thinking about comforting, right, like we would a little baby toddler child. We're going to take that next breath. Inhale, pressing up through the bottoms of those feet like we're holding up that ceiling. And then right foot's going to extend out. Single happy baby. And we're creating this beautiful arch through this right hip flexor. Okay, so this is where we stabilize through the spine. Okay, that big muscle, the psoas, comes up around and actually connects to the back of our spine. So we're giving this space some length. Think about a weight connected to the heel of that right foot and just allowing that to kind of waterfall over the bed. This is a great place to give length to this part of the body. And we don't do it very often. 
Inhale, come back to center. Find that double full happy duty. Exhale, give ourselves a couple of rocks. And then slowly inhale on that next breath. Left leg extends out, finding that single happy baby. That same movement, getting that beautiful extension down through that left leg. Weight attached to the bottom of the left heel. Keeping some work active in this right leg. Full breaths, think about extending through the belly, through the spine. Elevated or suspended uh, L pose is so fabulous. Just feeling weightless, right? Just letting that movement, any type of energy, just kind of waterfall or melt off the legs. If we're doing this first thing in the morning, let's get a little bit more work through the core. So we're going to start with the single leg. Right leg comes down, arms come up. Exhale, we're going to slightly lift those shoulder blades off that uh, mat or bed. And then again, opposite side, left leg lift. So we can stay here with the single leg lift or we can add on double leg lift, finding that line Tadasana lift and then exhale, pressing up and away. We don't want to round through the shoulders. We want to think about keeping that space open. Inhale, open. And exhale, lift. Just starting to, again, think about stoving a flame. Okay, we're creating this flame in this solar plexus, and that is where that deep, deep energy to thrive, to fight for goodness, to connect to our beautiful and unique power. We want to really start to use that to our benefit here. Let's take two more breaths. Last one. Releasing, pulling knees to chest. And again, give ourselves that option to really lengthen and extend. Again, this isn't about pushing ourselves to the very edge of where we're at. This is about giving ourselves the space to awaken, to awaken on the inside, especially in those times where maybe we're feeling dark, discouraged. So we're gonna come back, we're gonna find a seated position on our mat for just a few moments. We're gonna come back to those spinal circles and we're gonna do one more heart opener before we find our final opportunity here in this practice to meditate for a few moments. Switching both directions. And then slowly we're going to make our way to a kneeling position. Now, just to start, we're going to work through something just very basic. So if you haven't done a ton of um, back bends or got maybe some injuries through the low back and okay, then this is might be where you stay and the option is actually to either drop into those hills and then just work gently in this direction right so we're squeezing again towards the center of the of our spine from here it's going to look like this pressing hands to low back low back to hands bracing the core squeezing that imaginary block pushing the back of the head into a firm imaginary pillow and just gently again, connecting to that broadening between the shoulders, allowing those hearts to feel warmth, to feel extension, to feel opening, and to feel safety and trust in that. Okay, so as we come down, we're gonna find cow and cat and just work through some counter poses there. So we can stay there 
or we're going to work through just a single camel. We're not going to do a full camel unless you feel like you're in a place that you want to do that in your practice, but I'm not going to show that to you today. Okay, we'll work through that another day. So we're going to bring our bodies up to that kneeling position. Right hand's going to come to the heel. Again, you've got beautiful props. Grab your pillows if you need to. Okay, and just prop them up so you've got something for your hands. But the bed is really great because it actually gives more. But then we've got to make sure we can really connect to the core here. So as the right hand comes down, I'm going to actually slightly press the tailbone forward, which is going to create this over accentuation here, right? So I'm going to pull that belly in and up. Think about pressing the rib cage down towards the hips, letting the shoulder blade come together and then come back to that imaginary press back into a wall or pillow. Okay, the left hand can stay at the hip or if it feels okay and safe for us, we're gonna find extension. Okay, working through, engaging through the quad, the front of that thigh, engaging, and again, connecting to that power of trust, connecting to that power of gratitude, right? Think about, I love here, thinking about that initial warmth that you get from a sunrise, right? When the sun crisp and, and crests over like that mountainside and all of a sudden that cool morning air, you can feel the heat. That's what we want to create here. Go ahead and release that body down. Let the hips drop into those heels. Come forward, creating that counter pose, cow and cat. And again, being creative through all of this, you guys, this is your ability to be creative and explore for your body. And then switching sides, slowly making our way back up to that kneeling position. Left hand now comes to that left heel and coming back to that same energy work, pressing down through the fronts of the knees, which is gonna create this engagement through the quads, slight tuck in the tailbone, then taking that energy of the core, drawing in and up rib cage to hips left shoulder blade draws onto that back creating a broadening through the shoulder and chest right hand can stay at the hip or once again bringing that up and over feeling that connection to heat to power position on our mat, on our bed. Taking these few moments, making any adjustments to our clothing, and then finding once again a little bit of stillness. So you may want to take a little bit longer after we wrap up this practice together. Give ourselves permission to do that. This is a great place to then write down gratitudes, daily needs, and um, daily just observations. This is a wonderful time to journal more than ever. And so maybe moving into that after this is over is a wonderful, wonderful thing to practice. But as we finish coming back to where we just began, closing our eyes, hands at the thighs, at the lap, or even once again, connecting those hands to the heart. Taking a full inhale, open mouth, exhale. And feeling the shifts without the need to create results or have results. Can you feel the shifts, the ahas that have taken place? You are power. It is your divine right to feel peace, to have calm. But it doesn't mean that there will not be chaos or movement around us. Where practice is an amazing time to practice what it means to be still amongst movement. It allows our 
ourselves to then go out off our mats, out of our spaces, and experience life in a very real way. But take that same connection and energy that we have in this space when the world is moving and swirling around us, we can be still. I am grateful to wake up, to experience a new day. I am still, I am calm, I am peace. I am love and compassion for myself and for others. Taking one more inhale. Full exhale. <sighs> Bringing those hands to heart center. I honor and salute you. The power in me feels that power. Even when we're not together, I feel of your power. We are so connected. Please give yourselves permission to process, to feel, and then to remember this truth that you are powerful. Shine on. Namaste. Love you all. Mwah.